Well, hello there, Dan here, Essex UK, USDA Zone 8B. So got plenty to get through in the video today, so we're gonna be getting on with that very shortly. So I'm going to be talking about quite a lot of things in this video. So you'll probably find plenty of videos down below on those subjects in more detail. So if there's anything I talk about that you wanna learn more, just take the time if you've got it to look in the description box below and hopefully there'll be a more elaborated video on that subject. So we're gonna go in the polytunnel now and you can see some of the things I've got growing and really looking forward to the gardening season this year. So it's been quite mixed actually when it comes to the growing season so far this year. Seems to have been quite slow getting underway. I don't know if you've found that, but um, seemed quite cool, cold, etc. up until sort of relatively late this year. I wasn't particularly surprised when that happened because last year we didn't really, if I remember correctly, get the first frost until around December time, which could be considered relatively late. But uh, anyway, there we go. We have to remain flexible, don't we, regarding gardening. So let's uh, get in this tunnel and uh, see what we got. So I've actually got all manner of things growing in here. I have the peach tree here, variety peregrine, that's looking very good. There's some nice fruits on that. Nectarine Lord Napier, some really nice fruits on that as well. We'll get more into these later in the year as the uh, fruits get bigger, so that's absolutely grand. So last year, did a little bit of seed saving, which I'm very glad I did. In fact, these sweet corns I'm growing here, variety double red, it's a lovely red sweet corn. It's not particularly sweet, but it's got a really nice earthy taste. It tastes very natural. So for those of you who want a sort of nice earthy tasting sweet corn, it's also quite chewy as well and a nice color. So a nice bit of a body, bit of variety. So I saved part of a cob last year. Let's put it somewhere. I rediscovered the uh, part of the cob earlier in the year, took the little seeds Bit sweet corns out of it, whatever you want to call them, and I actually planted them. And I planted them probably about three weeks ago, something like that. And you could see there, so it's really, really good there. They weren't hybrid seeds, not F1s, nothing like that. Open pollinated seeds I got from Real Seeds. Many of you are aware I really rate that company, Real Seeds. But uh, yeah, so, so far so good, and seeds saved there with the minimum of effort and a nice result, which is wonderful. Now here, Victor Winter Squash, I've grown these before. These were from, you can see a little bit sort of a, <laughs> they've weeped a little bit, poor things. I um, didn't get the watering done in here in time, but that'll be okay. These will recover, or at least most of them will now, which is good. So a few years ago, not, it wasn't last year, it was the year before, I saved the squash, saved some of the seeds, and uh, there we are, so that's uh, really good indeed and what else have i got from home save seeds here we go down here these so pumpkin variety pacific giant many of you have seen that uh, pumpkin video so very good there so i'm trying to get more into saving my own seeds it's a very good thing to do there's loads of information on there you can get you can look into if you want to get into that but saving your own seeds let me know how many of you are into that sort of things any tips hints advice etc perspectives you've got comment in the comment section below be very interested to see uh, just uh, what you do and your successes so what else here chili variety onavec once again i saved a few who I saved a, a chili last year, planted the seeds earlier this year on the 7th of March and uh, a good germination rate. And I, that's probably about it. There might be a little bit more, but uh, we won't go into that too much now. So with regards to the colder temperatures this year, my aubergines and in fact the chilies as well have actually suffered a little bit. They're quite behind where I would uh, like them to be as you could see here. This is variety long purple. So there you go. I really would like uh, these plants to be a bit bigger than this now, but uh, that's just how it is. They don't like to be subjected to much below about 10 degrees C, which is about 50 Fahrenheit, and it has certainly got below that. Now, what I could have done, which I've done in previous years, is move them inside and outside in order to make sure they stay above the 10 degrees C, but I haven't had the time, as many of you are aware, to budget to that, but that's fine. So what am I going to do to make sure I get a crop? So I've found when growing plants 
when I'm growing aubergines, I can use a little bit of experience as an example for this. Last year, when I grew aubergines, I grew some in containers pots, some in the ground, in my old polytunnel, some of you may remember. And unsurprisingly, the ones in the pots came into fruiting first. I believe this is because when you're growing pots, sorry, growing plants, fruiting plants, cropping plants, etc., in pots, the plant feels more under stress, so it wants to produce its fruit and its seeds quicker in order to re reproduce. And of course, the growing medium warms up quicker generally if it's in a pot as well, thus making the plant grow quicker. Makes it keeps the growing medium warmer, etc. So there we are. So that's what I'm going to be doing there. So what have I got here? Let's uh, have a look. So I've got a variety of runner bean, which I planted on the 4th of April. It's a white flowering variety called Moonlight, which I'm really looking forward to. I've got plenty of those there, and I'm going to be planting them out probably within the next few weeks or so. Down here, I have a variety of climbing French beans called Cobra. So in my experience, I've found climbing French beans to do better in periods of drought and warmer weather as opposed to runner beans, which generally don't like to go over and above about 25 degrees C, which if I remember correctly is about 77 Fahrenheit. At least that's what I've found anyway. And last year it was very hot here, some days up at around 40 degrees C, and it just seemed too hot for runner beans. My ones down the allotment I had at the time really just didn't, didn't do very well at all. Not totally fair to just blame it on the heat. I wasn't able to get down there to water as much as would have been ideal. So of course that could be a factor as well. But either way, I've still found that uh, climbing French beans seem to do a little bit better in warmer, drier periods. So I'm growing plenty of those because I want to get a nice crop of beans. And down here, what else have I got to plant out? I have got white albino beetroot planted on the 3rd of April. These are ready to go out. What's happened there? Oh, don't worry too much about that. Yep, 3rd of April, ready to plant out. So there we are, and they'll be going out relatively soon. So we're gonna leave the tunnel now and uh, look at one of the gardens I've got here and talk about a few things I have going on in there. So you can see in this area here, got all sorts going on. Made a feature here of one of my old trailers. This trailer here, I used to use this when I, well, a few years ago, when I, well, I'm still working as a gardener now, but. Uh, when I first started out, I used that trailer behind the Ford Focus I had at the time. So a nice little trailer, but I don't use it so much nowadays. And um, I haven't had the heart to get rid of it, nor do I want to. So I've uh, kept it here and made a little feature of it. So I'll show you later the blueberries in there, but just sometimes it's nice to make a feature out of things. I think it is anyway. And uh, that way you could keep something that uh, you might be attached to a little bit and um, at the same time utilize it for something you like so that's wonderful got a grapevine here this is variety riesling german wine grape and over there we have slovakian variety of grape called rear a lovely grape so let's uh, look a little bit closer at the rear grapevine and uh, you can see just some lovely little uh, baby grapes on there which of course is grand so i bought this uh, vine yeah, it was. It was from Victoriana Nursery, so you might want to look on there. And if you want to get a rear grapevine, they're lovely looking grapes. I saw them a few years ago when I was doing a work for doing some work for a gentleman, and um, I saw these rather large grapes growing uh, up uh, his fence. Many people say that grapes grown in the UK are smaller than what you would uh, generally buy in, say, the supermarket or something like that. Well, these make a nice size and they're a lovely taste as well and they look beautiful. So a nice ornamental grape to grow. But yeah, there's certainly a nice uh, load of little baby grapes coming on these. I'll give you a close up. So if you look down here, look, you can see there, look, there are your baby grapes like that. Try and get in close. There you go. So yeah. Got quite a nice uh, crop to come, hopefully, on here. So yeah, it's looking like uh, a good year for blueberries to come this year, so far anyway. Let me know how your blueberries are doing. And um, yeah, got an assortment of varieties here. Gold trout there, what's this one? 
that is Duke. So yeah, it's sometimes said that it's good to have more than one variety of blueberries, at least to my knowledge, most blueberries are partially self-fertile, so they can produce fruit from their own pollen, but uh, some sources say you want to have more than one variety, that way you can increase your potential fruit set. Make your own decision on that one, do your own research, as I generally like to say, but yeah, lovely crop to come on here. So with regards to blueberries, you want to make sure you've got them covered up. You see, I haven't, but I, I will be doing so very soon. Blackbirds, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, like to uh, eat them. So get them covered up with a net. And when you water blueberries, if you can, water them with rainwater, because tap water tends to be more alkaline, whereas blueberries like it a bit more on the acidic side, four and a half to five and a half pH growing medium. So if you can, water with rainwater from a water butt. So down here I've got some potatoes growing. I actually planted my potatoes relatively early this year in February and uh, doing very well indeed. So today I found this one here look, which I saved from last year, variety condor. So I'm going to plant that today. Let's get on with that. So you can see these taters here look really good and I've got them nicely covered up now. So expecting a nice crop. So here's the 30 litre or yep, 30 litre bucket. There we are. And uh, I'm going to put a bit of this uh, Dalek compost in the bottom. So in goes the potato here. You can see it's got a few chits on there, but this is really not specific gardening. That's going to go in there like that. A bit more of this compost here. So as I stated, made this from Garha Dalek tumbler uh, compost bins, which I've since uh, stopped using, but still got some lovely compost here. So here we go. I'll have other compost, etc., to top this up uh, when they surface or when it surfaces. So, as long as I can get a good 20 or so weeks growth from this, should be able to get some uh, lovely potatoes. Of course, one benefit of growing them in a tub like this is you could take them, you know, in a poly tunnel or something if later in the year a bit of a frost or cold weather threatens. But, you know, 20 weeks from now, May, June, July, August, September, October, should be just fine with this. So, uh, Wait and see uh, what happens here and expecting some lovely taters uh, this year. So under here I've got some cauliflowers variety all year round. So let's uh, see, oh, crikeys, look at those. They're beautiful they are. Need to do a little bit of weeding. I haven't weeded these since I planted them out, I don't know, six weeks or so ago, something like that. But yeah, yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. So you can see I've got them covered up with this uh, fleece here. Now the fleece wasn't needed you know, for protection, it was just what I had to keep these covered up from birds. Pigeons around here are incredibly uh, hungry and ravenous, so they would truly love to have eaten these. And of course, had I left them uncovered, I would have expected that to happen. And of course, we have got cabbage white butterflies coming up, probably in the not too distant future. But yeah, so they've been covered up. Now, of course, this will have helped to keep them a little bit warmer. So a few weeks ago, when it was still a little bit on the cooler side, it would have helped keep the plants a little bit warmer, which would have helped, I would imagine anyway, to a little bit of quicker growth. So these look really good. And um, yeah, I've got some other brassicas to show you, but we'll do that in another video. What brassicas are you growing? Are you growing any this year? Now, regarding covering brassicas, I have got a biodegradable cover that I was sent from a gentleman which I'll be featuring probably in my next video. I might uh, end up covering these with it actually here. This whole bed here, if it's big enough when I've got it planted out. So stay tuned for that one. But yeah, really happy with these uh, cauliflowers, but uh, we'll be keeping them covered with this fleece here just for the time being, which is fine. Close knit netting will also do, but uh, you get the idea, keep them covered up. So anyway, yeah. Loads more I could show, but if I do that, the video will be too long. So we'll be doing that in a subsequent video. So plenty to be getting on with here and expecting some lovely crops. Hopefully in the next video I'll do, we'll do some planting together. That'd be great. And I'm going to be doing some planting out relatively soon here to get things growing. But yeah, so we're in the thick of it now. Growing season's definitely here, at least round here anyway. Maybe you live in another part of the world, parts of Canada where it, uh, or somewhere like that, where it just hasn't warmed up much yet. But, uh, you know, I'm always interested to hear from uh, 
people in other climates as well, whether warmer or cooler than the UK, or indeed the same. So we can all learn from each other and all very, very interesting indeed. Anyway, comments, questions, whatever's, please feel free to post below. Sometimes I'm not answering questions, comments, etc., as quick as I was before. Many of you are aware I'm very, very busy these days, but uh, no complaints, that's just how things are. And of course, as I stated before with gardening and indeed many other aspects of life, you know, it can be transient, you're changing things, you're moving around, aren't you? And you're, you're fitting it into your life and adapting it according to you, which is grand because that way you can always hopefully have a little bit of gardening going on to keep you and to keep um, the birds and the bees and the cabbage ripe butterflies, of course, happy. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for your time. See you in the next video.